بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مضل له ومن يتلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله أوصيكم وإياي أولا بتق الله فقد فاز المتقون وأحييكم بتحية الإسلامية السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praise due to Allah Rabbul Alameen who have created all of us for very noble purpose to know Him, to love Him, to serve Him and to get to have a good ending until we meet our Lord and He will reward us kindly with His Jannah. Amin. May the blessing and the mercy of Allah Rabbul Alameen be upon the Prophets from Adam to Noah to Abraham to Moses to Jesus and the last messenger of Allah to all mankind Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and to the family of the prophets who follow their teachings and to all the companions of the prophets and those who follow the companions and those who come after them and to all fellow Muslim brothers and sisters who are present today. Amen. Allow me to remind you the adab, a very important teaching of our Prophet ﷺ, where the adab play a very important role in the Day of Judgment, where it is more valuable than other ritual. One of the adab that the Muslim have not been honoring or trying their best to follow is the adab of responding to the salam. When somebody offers us the Islamic greeting, a prayer, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh, example, we should respond back the way that they have offered us or better. So if one came to you and said, Salaamu Alaikum, the minimum, the shortest, Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Rahmatullah. If the second one come and offer you, Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullah, Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Wa Barakatuh. If the third one come and say, Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullah Wa Barakatuh, how should we respond, brother and sister? Yeah, wave your voice louder, louder than the one who offered you. Inshallah, yeah, I'll give you the second salam. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Then we feel the spirit. The spirit is back again. Maybe the brothers and sisters are not aware about the power of salam. You can move a person just by offering salam. You can open the heart, the mind, and the ear of a not yet Muslim just by offering salam. So please don't take this thing lightly because this is a command from Allah. وَإِذَا حَيِّتُمْ بِتَحِيِّتٍ فَحَيُّ بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَرُدُّهَا إِلَى الْآخِرِهَا when anyone offer you the Islamic greeting, respond to the offer. If possible, give them back a better one. Like what you have done just now, Alhamdulillah. Brothers and sisters, today we know this is the ending day of TDR. And we believe that everything that begins will have an ending and the topic that was given to me also is a very important topic. It's about the, the final sermon. There's a lot to share with all the good brothers and sisters. You have been with us patiently from yesterday. May Allah reward all of you, inshallah. But what is important is we make sure that when you leave this event, this conference, 
you carry back with you a very important message based on the final sermon of Prophet Muhammad wasallam. The Prophet start by saying, Ayyuhan Nas. Now look at the way the Prophet addressed the Ummah. He was in Arafah, and you know Arafah is where only Muslim is allowed to be there. Not yet Muslim, they are not allowed to be in the Holy Land. And the Prophet was addressing the Ummah who are performing Hajj with him. Neither he called them Ayyuhal Hujjaz. No. Neither he called them Ayyuhal Muslimun, Mu'minun. No. But he called them with a very beautiful words. Ayyuhal Nas. What is the meaning of Ayyuhal Nas, brother? What is the meaning of Ayyuhal Nas, brother? Oh, people. People. Meaning the Prophet want all his ummah to understand that we Muslim are here to represent everybody, not only Muslim. We are not just talking about you and me, we are talking about the whole mankind. We have failed to represent Islam in this manner. When the Muslim talk about any issues, the way we address the issue like this is only for us. No, you are wrong. This is the final message of the Prophet Sallallahu to his Ummah. All people, not all Arabs, majority are Arabs, not all Muslim, no all Hujjahs, no all people, Ayyuhannas. Isma'u qawli. Listen to me carefully. Now the Prophet is very serious. Because this is a very important sermon. The Prophet said, I do not know whether I shall or we shall meet each other again after this. And after this hush, the Prophet said, we do not know that we shall meet again or not. And it's so true. After that, the Prophet passed away. Before the next hush, the Prophet passed away. Now, when the Prophet was giving this sermon, the first one, when he said, Ayyuhannas, then he reminded them with the reminder of Allah. We don't remind people with what we feel, what we think is good, what Allah wants us to remind each other. Inna Allah yaqul, indeed Allah have remind all of us. Ya ayyuhan nas. Again, he quote with the ayah in Surah Al-Hujrat, O people. Ya ayyuhan nas, inna khalaqnakum min zakarin wa untha. It is we, Allah, who have created all of you from one male and one female. Now look at this message, brother and sister. If every Muslim understood this message clearly from before, in Malaysia, just an example, every year we have 30 to 40,000 of people performing hajj. If you understand this message, every year you have at least 30, 40,000 people entering to Islam. That should be the result. One pilgrimage bring one not yet Muslim to Islam. But we fail to do that. 
what we will bring back? Tamar, Zamzam, Kalas. Now Allah and the Prophet is reminding us in the last sermon, O oh people, indeed we created all of you from one male and one female, one father and one mother, Adam and Eve. Now this is the spirit that all Muslims must have. We all came from one family, the family of Adam and Eve. We are no stranger to the Arabs, neither to the non-Arabs, to the white or to the black, no. Then Allah make it very clear. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَرَفُ who decide to make us different? I'm standing in front of you, brother and sister. What is my race, brothers? Chinese. Do I choose to be a Chinese? If you don't like Chinese, you have a problem with Allah, not with me. Because Allah make me Chinese. What can I do? Our brother, Samuel S. Bukhari, from Sri Lanka. What can you do? It's not that we choose to be different. Allah said, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا It is we who make you into nation and tribes. Now why this last sermon is so important? Because racism, tribalism is very common among mankind. It's very common. The Arab feel that they are better. Maybe the white feel they are more superior. It's common. This is our own feeling. We love our people more. We love our tribe more. We love our race more. It's normal. Before Islam. But Islam, Allahu Akbar, is so beautiful. Is coming to tell us we are all one big family. Allahu Akbar. And that's why Allah said, I make you into nation and tribes, not for you to fight against each other, to look down upon each other, to belittle each other, to say, I'm better than you because of my color. No. Because of my name. No. Because of my race. The reason Allah make us different is لِتَعَارَفُ Allah make it very clear so that you get to know each other, share with each other, compliment each other, help each other. That is the spirit. And this spirit is gone. This spirit, brothers and sisters, opened the door to every one of us to Islam. This spirit opened the door to the black brothers and sisters known as the Negroes at that time to accept Islam. Why then Allah said, Inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum The best among you. Remember, this is what Allah said, not me. The best among all of us in the sight of Allah is those who have taqwa. And taqwa is not here. It's not how I look, how I dress. No. When the Prophet talked about taqwa, فَأَشَارَ إِلَى صَدْرِهِ ثَلَاثَ marat, He will make a sign toward his heart and say, أَتَّقْوَهَا هُنَاك Taqwa is here. Not on my dress, not on my face, not on my coffee. No, 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 no. Taqwa is here. Allahu Akbar. This is what the Prophet start when he was giving his last sermon. To break all the barrel that all Muslims should embrace 
everybody and welcome everybody. And because of this spirit, just 23 years, the whole Makkah and Medina have a new landscape. From Darul Mushrikeen in Makkah, 90% of Mushrik turned to be 100% Muslim. Allah Akbar. For how long, brother and sister? 23 years. Medina also experienced the same changes. Medina from Yathrib now is known as Medina al Munawarah, the city of light. It enlightened everybody who entered this place. And you can see now everybody is going to Mecca to do what? To perform Hajj. You can see all different kind of people, different type of people, different level, king, drivers, workers, male, female, young, old, everybody is there. Now this is what the prophet want us to listen to his last sermon and listen carefully. Like now you have been listening to all the lectures being given to you by all the speakers before me. I believe they have shared with you a lot of information about what the prophet has said about the time of the last day, what is going to happen to all of us. But we do not know whether we will remember this again after today. And then the Prophet ﷺ continued by saying, لَيْسَ اللَّهِ لِلْعَرَبِيُّنْ فَتْرُ الْأَلَى الْأَعْجَمِينَ وَلَا الْأَبْيَدْ عَلَى الْأَسْوَدْ إِلَى الْأَخِرِيهَا Neither the Arab is superior than the non-Arab. Why the Prophet said that? Quran was revealed in Arabic. The Prophet was an Arab. Companion of uh, Arabs, majority was in Arafah uh, uh, Arabs, but the Prophet said, "Laysa al-Arabiyun fatrun al-Ajamin." Allahu Akbar. He is not here to promote race, to promote tribes. He is here to promote mankind. There is the message. Because Allah is Rabbul Alameen, Lord of the world, not Lord of the Arabs. Allah do not belong to us only. Allah never said, I am the Lord, I am the creator of the Muslim. I am the creator of all things. He created you, me, Chinese, non-believer. He created halal meat, halal animal, haram animal. Is Allah's creation. Of course, he know why. He have all the wisdom. We don't understand. You know why, brother, see, that this last sermon is so important? Because the prophet is aware that there will come a time again, his race is going back to Jahiliyyah. This ummah, that once upon a time, we are so racist, we are so tribalist. And then the prophet came and freed all of us from all this kind of thing and make us one great nation. Khaira Ummah. This good nation is going to go back. Backward, we are not moving forward. Now we are talking about race again. Are you following me, brother and sister? Yes, good. If after this you still talk about your race, you have problem. The problem that means you don't understand the sermon of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How can we be so ignorant when this message was so clear from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? 
Then the prophet continued, there are more that I'd like to share with you, brothers and sisters. But you can read the last sermon of the prophet, Khutbah Vida, by yourself. Like I said, if everyone who perform Hajj, there are 2 million to 3 million people perform Hajj every year. If 2, 3 million come home, everybody will go back to the community and bring back the message of Islam, the message of peace. Just one, bring one back to Allah. So how many new family we have every year, brothers? If three million and three million carry the same mission, so how many new families do we have per year? How many? I give you the calculation, three million. <laughs> and you still don't have no answer. I was so confused now. <laughs> Just one to one. You get three million new family. Allah. Then there will be peace in the world. Because that is the message of Islam to bring peace to everybody. And now everybody is having phobia towards us. Everybody is afraid of the Muslim now. When they look at the Muslim, are they terrorists? Are they going to kill me? Why must we kill people? We are here to save people, not to kill, not to destroy. But we are here to save people. But because we fail to understand the last sermon of Prophet Muhammad And the Prophet also informed us, Kullu Muslim ala Muslim haram. Look at the saying of the Prophet. Damuhu, maluhu, wa irbuhu. For all Muslim, wherever you are, haram. What is haram? What is haram, brother? Sacred. Don't take haram in forbidden. They mean Makkah, haram. Forbidden to go. Medina haram again. Cannot go. No, there is where you have to go. When the fitna Dajjal appear, that is the best place for you to make hijrah. Makkah and Medina. Why? Only these two cities, Allah will send angels to protect. Where Dajjal will not be able to enter. And the prophet did mention in one of his saying that every prophet was sent to his people and every prophet will remind the people about Dajjal. Not only now. Because Allah has his qadr that this is going to happen. So the name Dajjal is been known to every nation. But now we forgot because we don't know whether we are also part of Dajjal or not. Because one of the work of Dajjal is to twist and turn what is right, look, that is wrong. What is black become white, what is white become black. That is one of the work of Dajjal, the meaning of Dajjal. Now the Prophet sallallahu remind us, every Muslim to another Muslim is sacred. What is sacred? Your blood. Now you see killing everywhere is a great fitna. How can this ummah who was united by Islam with the blessing of La ilaha illallah now become enemy to each other? We know Allah have said, Is kuntum a'da an fa'allafa bayna kulubikum fa'asbahtum bi ni'matihi ikhwana. 
Once upon a time, you fight against each other because of race, because of color, because of tribe. You are enemy to one another. But with the blessing of Allah, La ilaha illallah, and Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu you become family. One ummah. And now you are fighting and killing each other again. We are doing just the opposite of what the Prophet have reminded us. Haram damuhu. Your blood is sacred. Maluhu. Your property, your money is sacred. Nobody has the right to take any penny from you without your permission. And also your dignity. You may not like somebody. You may not like me as a person. No problem. Don't worry. It's not a sin. But when you talk bad about me, you, you collect sin now. You don't like me, it's okay. Just, just, just don't look at me, Kalas. Is that so difficult? No. But don't talk about me. Don't talk bad about me because every Muslim have their own dignity. You must honor their right. This is the saying of the Prophet ﷺ. If the Muslim have been following closely the saying of the Prophet, there will be peace among all of us. And then the Prophet reminds the man about your responsibility, brothers. We have a big responsibility. Are we Allah said, you know, we are in a higher position than the woman. Do you think we are better than a woman, brother? Are we better? Are we stronger than a woman? Brothers, come on. I don't hear the brothers. You know, yes, of course. If not, you cannot be a brother. Our children, our wife want us to be a protector, to be strong, to protect them. You must be strong. You must be stronger. Yeah, in general, we are stronger than the woman. Because we have responsibility. When you marry, when you marry a lady, you are taking the amana. The Prophet said in Khutbatul Wida that Faakas Tumuhuna bi amana Now you are taking over the amana, the trust from Allah that you are here to protect her, to dress her up, to feed her. To give her whatever she deserves, like how her parents take care of her. You are there to protect her. Give her the right. Honor her. Then you become a real man. You must work hard. You support your wife. Not wife support the husband. Now we have problem. Men don't want to work. Men said, we relax because women are very strong. Women work so hard to the extent that men just don't want to fight with you anymore. You see what happened to the men nowadays? I have a group of my friends came to Malaysia and was you know, traveling with them. And they, everywhere they go, they saw woman, woman moving so active. Hey, where's the man? I said, yeah, the man in the coffee shop, yeah, you know, the man relaxing here. The man, mashallah, no. the man made dua. No. <laughs> you see, women are not good. May Allah guide us, brothers and sisters. I mean. Then the Prophet remind us again that remind us that remember that you have right upon yourself, your woman have right upon you, your children have right upon you. He want everybody to understand the right of others. Human rights was been promoted from 
the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Seven basic human rights. You learn by yourself, inshallah. If you want to know more, we have class, ongoing class here yeah, in our markas. If TDR is not here, we have our markas al Khadim in PJ side. Come and inshallah, you will learn more about the seven basic rights that Islam have promoted before the West champion human rights. So, brothers and sisters, then the Prophet ﷺ remind us. Each time when the Prophet want to remind his ummah, he remind them with ayyuhan nas, ittaqillah, O people. Again, he said, O people. Because he want us to understand Islam is for everybody, not only for you and for me, for everybody. You must go back to your family, to your not yet Muslim friend, your neighbor. Tell them what is Islam. Tell them Allah is for them. Prophet Muhammad is a prophet sent to all of them. The prophet did mention there is no prophet after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is the seal of all prophet. Final. And there is no ummah after this. We are the final generation, the final ummah. And that's why Allah grant us with Kuntum Khaira Ummah. You are the best. Are we the best, brothers and sisters? Yes, we are the best. Do other people look at us like we are the best? No. Other people is look at us, we are the worst nation, the troublemaker. We waste a lot of time attacking each other, fight against each other, condemning each other, judging each other. You are wrong, I am right. You kufar, you go to hell. Na'unzubillah. This is what's happening every day. You see, Muslim is attacking Muslim. I know my people. My people used to ask me a lot of questions. They are very confused. What can I do, brother and sister? I said, you have the right to get confused about the Muslim. But you will never get confused about Islam. You understand the difference, brother and sister? If a not yet Muslim is telling you that they are very confused about what happened to the Muslim, you said, Amin, no problem. You have to agree, it's true. Are we confused, brother and sister? Are you confused about what is happening in Iraq, what is happening in Syria, in Libya, in Afghanistan? Are you confused? Yes, why? Why are we killing each other? Why are we destroying each other? If we are confused, they get more confused. But then, you cannot lie to them because it's true, it's walking, it's real, it's happening. Even a lot of young people came to me and said, Sheikh Hussein, what is happening? Now I, have, I don't feel good. I feel ashamed to be a Muslim sometimes. I don't even want my friend to know that I'm a Muslim if possible, especially the rivers. Because of all this happening, I said, we have to face reality. What is true is true. What they say is true, we say yes. But don't get confused about Islam. Islam never allowed us to do this thing. Islam never taught us to do any innocent killing, no. Islam wants us to save life. Look at the saying of the Prophet again. I remind all of you, Usikum bitaqwallah, to be obedient to Allah. But how can we 
be obedient to Allah? What is the best way, the easiest way to obey Allah? So the companion wants to know. So the Prophet reminds them of two important things. As-sam'a wa ta'a. Now what makes us different between us, we are so advanced in technology, compared with the Sahaba. Sahaba have nothing. About the world, they are so far behind us. But they have something that we don't have. They have the Quran, we have the Quran. They listen to the hadith of the Prophet. We saw, we are listening to the saying of the Prophet until today. But what is the main difference between we and the Sahaba and the second and the third generation? Where the Prophet said, "Qairul Qurun Qarni, thumma lazina yalunahum, thumma lazina yalunahum." The best time is the time in my my time. The people who live in the time of the Prophet and the coming generation, and after generation, three generation. After that, the Prophet silent. They had three generation. They are sama wa taa. We are sama. And then, what happened to us? We are also some are. You are listening now. Are you listening to me, brother and sister? Uh, so when you are listening, you are some are. Allah said, listen. So we are listening, alhamdulillah. But after listening, what do we do? Uh, the companion some are, what taught? Samikna. Wa atokna We samikna Wa sayna Yes we hear, yes we hear Yes we know, alhamdulillah How is TDR? Shukur, alhamdulillah MashaAllah, there's a lot of shopping, you know There's a lot of uh, abaya and all this Shukur, alhamdulillah After that, wait for another TDR again That's why we never change Something is wrong with our brain. You know? I think something is wrong with our intention too. So it's time to change, brother and sister. And the prophet, see what the prophet, listen and obey. And the prophet continued by saying, in kana abdan habashiyah. Look at the beautiful saying the prophet. Even the one that is talking to you, the one who is teaching you, is a black, ugly slave. Why did the Prophet use the word black here? Because Allah gave him the wisdom, the knowledge, the prophecy that it will come that we will look down upon a person just because of his color. Is that happening, brother? You may have a PhD holder, but the Mr. White just have a BA or MA, but he is white and his eyes blue. <laughs> you have PhD, you know, double PhD, but you are a bit dark side, you know. And your eye also too too black. You don't have blue, brown. Because of color, they pay you a salary, a very minimum salary. Do you agree with me, brother? Yeah. Have you experienced that? Yeah. Until now, if you go to the Middle East, you can experience that. And the Prophet is talking to his people. In Kana Abdan Habashian, even a black slave, an ugly man is talking to you. Listen and obey. Just be good, be a good listener. You want to be a very good wife, it's not difficult. Listen. Eh? Now the husband is laughing. <laughs> Listen and obey. 
Peace, no problem. Everything clear. But normally when we listen, no, no, obey. No, no, no. I also have my feeling. No. If you want to eat dim sum, you put feeling, no problem. I want to put some prawn here, I want to put some veggies, that feeling is okay. But when the general instruction comes to you, just be a good listener. If you want to be a good children, a successful student, listen carefully and obey and follow. Alhamdulillah. There will be a lot of peace, inshallah. It's not difficult, brother and sister. And then the Prophet continued. Look at this saying of the Prophet, Khutbatul Wida. Faman yaish min kum ba'di Fasayara ikhtilafan kathira Allahu Akbar Don't ever say that there is no warning by Prophet Muhammad Wasallam to his ummah. He warned us 1,400 years ago. Whoever among you live after my departure, after the death of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, the Prophet said, you are going to be exposed, you are going to encounter a lot of division among this ummah, this great ummah. Once upon a time, they are so divided, Allah unite them under La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. There will come a time this Umar is going to be so divided again. We are more divided than the Yahud and the Nasara. Is that happening? There is a saying in Indonesia, in Malay. Yeah? Let me quote this saying first. They said, perpecahan umat Islam. Dia pecah sampai tak boleh pecah. Wow. How do you translate in English? <laughs> Meaning, if you take a glass, you throw it down, the glass will break into pieces. And then you take those other glasses, the, the glass, the bigger one, you break again, you break again until it cannot break anymore. Is that very confusing? <laughs> now, how can this great nation become so weak, so divided, when we have one Quran, only one book? You go to China, the same Quran. Alif, Lam, Mim, Zalik, Al Kitab. There is one. You go to Africa, Alif, Lam, Mim, Zalik, Al Kitab. Start with Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, and with Qul Aunzu, with Nas. Nas, Nas, Nas again. People, people, people. Not Muslim only. Not Arabs only. Not you or me only. Nas, people, people, people. Start with Rabbil Alamin, Lord of the world. Then continue, brother. Uh, continue. Let us do it together. Yeah? You are caught by surprise. You forget when sometimes. Yeah? <laughs> I will say, Kul, you all continue so that we get Allah's reward tonight, inshallah. Kul Alhamdulillah. So we have collect a lot of reward today. If I recite you here, I get the reward. So now all of us got the reward. Now, brothers and sisters, before I end, because there's a lot to share with you. The Prophet have informed us, Man yaish minkum ba'di fasayara ikhtilafan kathira. The Prophet said that whoever live, whoever survive after my departure, after my death, you are sure to encounter, to be exposed to this great fitna. That this ummah is going to be divided again. And then the Prophet 
show us a way so that we will not be divided. Alay kumbisunnati. You just have to follow his sunnah. Now, we also have problem. We don't even know the sunnah of Prophet. The majority of the ummah today, if you ask them, sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, what is the definition of sunnah? Do you know what is the answer? Can you share with me, any of the brothers? What is your understanding about sunnah? What is our understanding? Yes? Way of life? No. Literally, it's not correct. Yes, brother? Following the teaching and the tradition of the Prophet, yes, one of the meaning, correct. There's another meaning. Following the action of the Prophet, brother, there. All are coming to the same meaning. Anyone knows? Do you know when I was taught, when I first became Muslim? No, no, no. Brother saying for a wife. Yeah? No, no, no. <laughs> At that time, we do not know how many wives we had. <laughs> yeah. And this is the great fitna also. When talk about sunnah, fa, fa, fa. Astaghfirullah alazim. No. Now, when I first became Muslim, the first thing I was reminded by the people who made me a Muslim, you kena sunat tau. I speak in Malay now, sunat, because majority here are Malays. I was in sunat. What is sunat? Sunat, sunat, sunat. No. The general idea of sunnah is optional. Sunnah itu sunat. That is the general understanding. You ask me, don't talk about the prophet, everything from the prophet, sunnat. Now I show you what the Prophet said. Kullu ummati yadkulun al-jannah illa man aba. All my ummah will go to paradise. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. See how loving the Prophet is to us. He is telling us even he has never seen us. He said all my ummah will go to paradise. Allahu Akbar. Except, there's an exception, those who refuse to go to paradise. The companion was shocked. Is there a Muslim who don't want to go to paradise? Even a crazy guy, you ask him, where do you want to go? Paradise. No one wants to say, I'll go to hell. But I have a friend who came to me. He said, Sheikh, if everybody go to paradise, then why Allah make hell? No, there will be a jam there. There will be a you know, long queue, you know, full house. I don't mind go to hell. <laughs> you can say it now. Now you can say anything you like. But once you go there, you know what is going to happen to you. Anyhow. The Prophet said, all my ummah will go to paradise except those who refuse. The companion asked, ya'ba ya Rasulullah. Who are the ones who refuse to go to paradise? Allah, see the saying of the Prophet, Man atani daqla jannah wa man asani faqad aba. Rawahu Muslim. In Sahih Muslim, you recite, you get this hadith. Whoever obey my teaching, follow my sunnah, he go to paradise. Whoever disobey my sunnah, reject my sunnah, ignore my sunnah, 
he, they are the group who refuse to go to Jannah. Na'udzubillah. Don't take the teaching of the Prophet lightly. Not all saying of the Prophet is sunnah. Not all action of the Prophet is sunnah. Because majority of say sunnah is sunnah. No. You want to know more? Come to our center. So to have a better understanding, so you how you know how to pre represent Islam properly to the people, and if you can represent Islam in the way Allah and the Prophet want us to represent, insha Allah, your not yet Muslim fan will be attracted to the beauty of Islam. They may come to Islam because of you. And this is one of the messages of the Prophet. Number one, Alaikum bi sunnati wa sunnatil khulafa al rashidin al mahdiin min ba'di. And also follow the sunnah of the four righteous khalifa after me. You have the right to follow them, alhamdulillah, because they have been guaranteed by the Prophet to be the people of paradise. So whoever follow them, inshallah. We all will go to paradise. I mean, simple as that. It's not difficult to go to paradise, brother and sister. Actually, it's very difficult to go to hell. You know? I think it's easy to apply to go to any colleges and universities, you know, if you are qualified. But you cannot apply to go to prison, you know. <laughs> I know. Send a letter to the Ministry you know, of Home Affairs. Now, please, you know, I'm applying. I'd like to go to the uh, University of Pudu, University of Kajang. You know. <laughs> it's too expensive. <laughs> yeah. Only those who really hardcore people, hardworking people, very active, they can go. And you must prove yourself that you are qualified. You know? to go to you see have money, Bismillah. This is just an example. So the Prophet called us to follow his teaching and the teaching of the righteous Khalifa. Alhamdulillah, brother and sister, my experience, I came to Islam through the life history of Omar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. Just by reading the history of Omar, I'm attracted to Islam. Can you imagine if people will learn more about this Khalifa and our Prophet? Like I said, 23 years, whole Mecca and Medina changed. All of us who are here, I believe you are more than 23 years. What changes that we have brought? Are there more masjid or more temples around us? Just an example, what is happening to us? Why? Because we fail to understand the final sermon of Prophet Muhammad. Each time when the Prophet continued his sermon, he asked all his companions, because that time, one verses was revealed. Remember the words, the verses that Allah revealed in, in, in Arafah? Anyone remember? Anybody can share with me? Al yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum. Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'amati wa raditu lakum al-islam adina. Was revealed in the last sermon of the Prophet ﷺ. Today, Allah said, not today, not Saturday, no, no, no. Today, 1,400 years ago when the Prophet was in Arafah addressing his Ummah, today, I, Allah, Rabbul Alameen, have perfected this religion for you. Allah said Islam is perfect. But look at the Muslim until today, the way we practice Islam, that Islam is not perfect. We need to minus here, plus here. 
make some addition here, what is happening to us? Islam don't belong to you, neither belong to me. It belong to Allah in the deen, in the law. Al-Islam belong to Allah. He have the right to do changes, not we. What went wrong with the people of the books? The people who receive Torah, the people who receive Injil, what went wrong with them? They have books like us. We said they are wrong. Why we said they are wrong? Because they have made changes in their book. Our book is still authentic, but the way we practice Islam have changed. My way, your way. You go to India, Indian way. You go to mainland China, Chinese way. You go to Middle East, Arabs way. Come back home, Malays way. So many ways. Plus M way and Cos way and Co way. So many ways. We get confused and more confused. Why not we follow the way that we have been asking Allah to guide us? Ehdina siratul mustaqim. O Allah, guide us all to the straight path to Allah's way not your way not my way is that fair enough brother and sister Allah this is the universal message of Islam that everybody can follow because it's Allah's way Allah it's beautiful brother and sister if we understand khutbatul vida today I have perfected my religion don't ever make any changes in Islam. Islam don't follow you, neither he follow me. We all must learn how to follow Islam. Is that easy? Is that simple, brother and sister? Inshallah. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued the ayah: "Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati." I have completed. I have completed my favor upon you. Whatever you need in this life, everything is in Islam. From the day you were born until you die. So perfect, so detailed, you cannot get in any other deen at all except in Islam. From the day you were born, there is gui guidance how to handle the newborn baby, what to do, Everything is there. How to educate your children, the upbringing of your children. Everything is there already. How to do business. Everything, you just name it, is in Islam. And this religion that Allah has perfected is the only religion that Allah is pleased with you. But the way we practice Islam is like it's not perfect yet. We need to make changes. Islam is perfect. We have to change, not Islam. And lastly, brothers and sisters, the Prophet Wasallam asked his ummah when he was delivering the final sermon, have I conveyed the message to all of you? Hal balaktu? You know what they said, brothers and sisters? What did the companion say to the Prophet? They bear witness, Naam, Ya Rasul, Qad Balakta. Have I conveyed some message of khutbah to Widak to all of you, brother and sister? I don't hear you. Only hear, say yes. I don't hear anything from there. Yes, good, Alhamdulillah. How about that? Yes, now you have witnessed that I have conveyed to you some of the khutbah to Widak. And the Prophet made ishara up and said, Allahumma shahad. Allahumma shahad. Allahumma shahad. Oh Allah, you bear witness. 
that I have conveyed all the message. No hidden message of Islam that was not conveyed by Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. If somebody will come and tell, oh, this is special, the Prophet only said to somebody, that one you keep to yourself, okay? No problem. Anything special, keep to yourself. We only want something that the Prophet have conveyed to us, call us. Simple. Anything hidden, let it hidden. Keep it hidden all the way, inshallah. Yeah? So, I have conveyed the message. We have shared with all the good brothers and sisters. We believe all of you have the right intention with the right spirit. That's why you are here. And remember when the Prophet said, Allahumma shad, Allahumma shad. He end by saying, Falyu balik ashahidukumul khai. Allah. This is the last word that I want to share with all the good brothers and sisters. The Prophet said, Whoever are here who are present in Arafah when the time with the Prophet. And now I'm saying that whoever are present in this hall, whatever you have learned today when you leave this hall, when you go home, convey the message to the others. Don't keep the knowledge by yourself. And that is how Islam spread. That's how Islam came to this country. That's how Islam entered China, to Indonesia, India, to Spain, because everybody go home with a mission. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. May Allah bless us, brothers and sisters. May Allah give us the right spirit, the right understanding that we are not going to treat everybody like a stranger anymore. They are our friend. They are our neighbor. They are our family. So whoever we can reach out, reach out to them. Whoever we can't reach out, just pray for them. Don't curse them. Don't curse them. Pray for them. Can we do that, brothers and sisters? Inshallah. So may Allah accept our prayer, may Allah strengthen our iman, increase our sabar, and may Allah forgive all the sin that we have committed. May Allah forgive the sin of our family who have passed away before they convey the message of Islam to others. And may Allah protect us, our children, our offspring, our future generation from further fitna amin ya rabbil alamin wa bilai tawfiqi wal aqri da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh